Thank you for joining our first cultural session with Lexi Rick Two Dogs. And I'm going to, oh, before we start, sorry about that. This um, session is going to be recorded and this session is brought to you by a grant from the South Dakota Humanities Council. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Lexi Rick so that he can open in prayer and start his cultural teaching. Thank you, everyone. Uh -huh. Good afternoon, everybody. We'll start with a prayer. O hech a dark yoyam, then I hech a yaglawash duke to hech a hoy chichin, a tiwayonki talkie, a own lake ki hech a hokata ki own yonki hech a warm glock, a monium to hech a hoy chichelot and gashla, ocean galapo, or me dark as a dark yoyasa, yasi, pilama yay like she. And today, you know, it's our great honor to have you, like she rick two dogs to provide us with the cultural teaching on who we are and where we come from. And so I'll go, we'll go ahead and pass it off to you, Lexi, Rick, and, and with the presentation that you have prepared for everyone today. Uh-huh. All right, I'll open my, share my screen. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Okay, so um, for those of you that's joining, uh, when I worked for Oglala Lakota College, I would start my classes uh, the semester with this presentation and the teachings that are based on this. So um, a lot of our people through colonization and I think a deliberate a process of uh, making it so that we would forget who we are, that we would have a disconnection from who we are, where we come from. So there's a saying that if you don't know where you came from, then you don't know where you're going. So I truly believe in that. And as I grew up, um, my father and his side of the family, my grandfather, uh, my mother on her side of the family, uh, her grandmother, which was her stepmother, would be my step-grandmother. Uh, and then uh, all my relatives on both sides, uh, we were taught as young people, all my cousins, my Tahashis and my Hankashis, uh, we were all taught where we come from and a history of who we are, who was our relatives. And so uh, to this day, I still remember uh, all of Porcupine, uh, the Rocky Ford area, and uh, Kyle are my relatives going on into Allen. So uh, what, it, what our Teotihuacan are... Uh, based on is the structure of the Ocheti Shakomi. So it, the answer would always be Untuepi, who are we? Who are we in history? Who are we? We all have Teospais. Uh, we all come from uh, Ospaya or uh, Wichoti. Uh, so I'll explain the structure of that and give you an example of some of the Teospias that existed. Uh, some have mm, have uh, disappeared, some of the Teospias, because the mm, members of the Teospia didn't keep it alive. You have to keep it alive. So I, I'm teaching my grandchildren now, you know, this is this is your history, this is where you come from. These are your people. You always remember that. These are your relatives. This is the story of our Teospai. These are the story of stories of the holy men and holy women and the chiefs, the leaders of our of our Teospai. So I, I teach them that. And I always tell 
my children and my grandparents, I mean, my children and my grandchildren, I said, never marry anybody from Porcupine, from Kyle, or from Allen, Yellow Bear Canyon. Uh, don't marry anybody from Manderson, and don't marry anybody from Wombly. So one of my daughters said, well, that doesn't give us much of a selection now, she said. <laughs> But I said, my, my uh, reason for telling you this and teaching you this is that uh, you never marry. So we were always afraid of that as a, as a people, uh, that we did not cross uh, bloodlines. Um, the word for that is wogluze, uh, where you uh, marry your own relative. And, as for, and when you have children, then they will be the product of incest. So uh, there's problems that physical, neurolo neurological problems that arise out of uh, crossbreeding, not only us as humans, the two-legged, but also all other animals, four-legged. So they don't crossbreed too, a lot of them. Like the buffalo, we raise buffalo in our, we have a pasture where we have Oh, I'd say about 51 head of a buffalo. And there's an unchi. So they're like us. They're a matriarchal society. There's an unchi buffalo, an old buffalo cow, cow that um, controls the dynamics of their kyoshpai. So she knows which uh, bulls and cows are of the same blood. So when the bulls become a breeding age, she chases them out and with the help of the other uh, uh, bulls in a, a herd, she would chase them out. So they stay off to the side. So what we do is we bring in new uh, of our relatives, the new newer uh, bloodlines into the, um, into the pack so that uh, they can reproduce. So the calves that are born every spring, I think we had 11 born this year. And so they're not crossbred. Um, so um, there is a, there's in history, uh, there's a story of Tatanka um, Gnashkian, uh, these, these buffalo that go crazy and they roamed the prairies and they would attack anything they saw. They would go after other buffalo and humans and like that. There's stories of our ancestors being chased by these buffalo. That's kind of fast speech in Lakota. You don't say but you say So these were uh, bulls that were uh, what you would call probably today insane or mentally ill. They must have got crossbred somewhere but they're also uh, a, a mystical like a mystical character in our stories um, so when they do the ishnati awichala won't be the ceremony um, when a young man comes in and dances with a buffalo hat he represents and he dances in there and he dances behind the young women that are going through the ceremony. So as he passes behind them, they put sage in their lap. So that's a protection from in the future when they get old enough, then uh, the unchis in there give them wawahokunkie. They give them teachings about how not of you of not being promiscuous, but to uh, remain a virgin as long as you can and. They said, there's young men, there's young men out there, they said, that will take your virginity. Um, and they won't, they won't be in love with you or they're not, have no intentions of marrying you. They just want to make that conquest. Um, there's men are out there. They said. So you have to be strong against it. So that sage symbolizes that protection against it. Um, and to be careful, they talk to them, be careful and not to get into situations where you could be raped. So they, they get those teachings inside. So um, 
us as the people, the structure of the Ocheti Shakoni uh, makes us who we are. Untuepi, who are we? So you might say, I'm so and so. And then deliberately, what was taken from us, like I said before, was our identity. You're, you're who you belong to a certain Tioshpai, a Tiwahe, and then a Tioshpai, and then an Oshpai or a Wichoti. So I'll explain those later as they go along. So we come from the Ocheti Shakoni. So this is. Um, this is uh, how the Ocheti Shakoni is structured. So you have the Wakpe Kute, Sisi Troma, Midi Wakhan Troma, Wakpe Tron, Ihank Troma, Ihank Troana, and the Ti Troma. So we Lakotas, Lakotas are the L speakers. So we come from the Ti Troma Oyate. Wachbekute are were a little bit north of the Sisitwan Oyate. Nowadays they say Sisitin. But I think Wachbekute Oyate are a lot of them are uh, mingled in with the Sisitwan Oyate, but there's some that live right north of them, the Sisitwan Oyate. Many Wakantuan are the people of Spirit Lake way up in North Dakota. They're close to the Canada. Canada, Canada, Canadian line, and then there's the Wachbetron, they're, they're a group by themselves too. And then Ihanktuma is the people, nowadays they say Yankton, that's down there by um, kind of in the south, uh, eastern part of the state of South Dakota, right along the Missouri River. And then the Ihanktuma are kind of mixed in with the Ihanktuma. And then there's some in the area of Flandreau too. Uh, and then there's some up in uh, northeastern uh, Montana. There's some uh, Canadian, uh, there's some uh, people up there that um, these people are called Nakodas and they, they range on into uh, uh, Canada. They're called uh, Carry the Cattle. Uh, and right in that area is where so these uh, Ihangtua and Ihangtuana talk with the N dialect. So uh, I can understand the Ihangtua. Uh, I used to visit with an old man named Fred Zephyr, and he spoke nothing but Nakoda. And uh, I could understand him, but the, the Ihangtuana is from. Montana and up into Canada, I can I can understand them if I listen really really close. But they they talk uh, totally different. I could I could uh, pick up words here and there, but so they have their own uh, way of speaking. <clears throat> so I'll break it down in the Chichkoma Oyate who we are. So we have the Hunkpapka Hochwoju. Oglala o Ohe Nupa, the two kettles, the Hasapa, the Blackfeet. But these aren't, these are not the same, are not related to the people in uh, Montana, or, or there's some in up into Canada, the, the Blackfeet tribe. This is different. There was a band of Lakotas called Sihasapa too. So O Ohe Nupa and Sihasapa are up there. Uh, with the Hohwoju on the Cheyenne River Reservation. Uh, and then the Itazibcho are also up there, the Wisata Bowles people. And then, of course, Sichangu is um, over there in Rosebud. Uh, and there's a branch of that's off of the Sichangu. They, they have a reservation of their own. They're called Lower Brule. So uh, this, this is how the Titoma break down into seven. So these, uh, the people, a lot of them uh, know where they come from. I, I talk to old people up in like Cheyenne River and they know where they come from. And I've talked to elderly people at Rosebud and they know where they come from. They, they know their the Teoshpai names. And, but uh, those people are slowly like disappearing. So I think someone needs to go and record them 
to make sure that uh, they set it straight. Uh, and even among the Hong Papka, it's like the, the, the older people know where they come from. They have their own Tiosh by names, uh, just like we have our own Tiosh by names, the, uh, the Oglala people. And I'll give an example of that later on. So um, maybe, uh, Jean, if up to this point, if there's any question or comment, I'll leave it open for that. Okay, Lakshya, that sounds good. And I believe that our relatives, they can raise their hand, our participants, our attendees, if they have any questions at this time for, for like she Rick two dogs on what he has talked about so far. Okay. All right, we'll continue on. Okay. There's no question. All right. So this is the Oglala uh, camp circle. So the Oglalas are, um, we have up there, they call them the bad faces. These people settled west of Pine Ridge uh, from that area where the Mormon church is going all the way towards the area called Slim Buttes. Uh, the Phayabia are between Red Cloud School and Oglala. So uh, Iteshicha, uh, is, their chief was Red Cloud. Uh, Khayabia, uh, and right in the area there, uh, their chief was uh, originally an um, uh, old man afraid of his horses and then young man afraid of his horses. And then the next one is Kiyuksa, which is where the town of Kyle are little wounded. I think they changed their name to Little Wound. So their chiefs was uh, Little Wound and then my grandfather, American horse. So there was two chiefs there. So it was um, two bands at one time in the 1800s, they, they, uh, they kind of like merged together and um, formed a group themselves. Of the, I mean, uh, of one, formed one group, but there was two chiefs. Then there's the Tchapkish Lecha, and uh, they're scattered uh, all over the reservation. They're, they're, they're some in every camp circle. So they, they don't really have a place where they kind of call their own. And I don't know how that happened or what happened there. And then the Wajaje is the people here in Porcupine. And these people here are part Ponca. Half of them settled in um, Oklahoma. But they speak almost the same language as us. And so they're actually one people with us, but they broke off and went towards the south eventually. First they were in Nebraska and then they moved south to Oklahoma. I guess they moved them over there in the late 1800s. And then the Oyukhbe are the people around uh, Manderson, all the way from Manderson to Rocky Ford. And then the Wagaluche are the people that uh, settled uh, right around the town of Pine Ridge. So uh, Wagaluche uh, is an old word that means marries your own relatives. So that's where they settled in, in the town of Pine Ridge. Mm. So uh, the Oyukhbe, their chief was uh, Crazy Horse and Big Road. The Wajaje, their, their chief was uh, Iron Cloud and Knife Chief. So Wagaluche is um, is uh, up there, and their chief was also Red Claw, also part of their band. So this is a uh, if you can read it, like the print is kind of small, but um, it explains to the different uh, bands and then the Oglala, the Teoshpae. So Oglala, Teoshpae, kind of going north of uh, 
Oh, the, town, the community of Oglala, you have the Kokayuta. And their chief was Mani Wanicha, no water. And if you read in history, there was a dispute between him and a supposedly crazy horse over a woman named Black Buffalo Woman. And, um, supposedly, the story goes, uh, no water shot um, crazy horse in the face. And then there's a teosh by called Transhecha, the dry wood. And then Ishinawicha is the community where the, the, the village of uh, Oglala is, and that's where the school is. So that's where the chief lone man settled. And then going towards the White River, there was a people called Shikshichala, right around in that area. And then the, coming towards the south from that river was Hatkash San. Uh, the, it's kind of a, a white turtle is the way they say it. And then there's the Iyashicha, which uh, are to the further uh, part of um, Oglala, right around, they settled like north and west, oh, south and west of that dam. And then they also called them Kalir, that Teoshpai. Uh, the Oyukhbe Teoshpai, which is the people from Wounded Knee. So there's people called Pahaska, south of uh, Wounded Knee, uh, towards south of Manderson, going towards Wounded Knee. It's Pahaska, where there's a white butte. So that was where the famous holy man, uh, Black Elk, lived. And then going west of uh, Manderson, the town of Manderson is a place called Khejiwakpala, the Grass Creek. And then going north of Manderson towards um, Rocky Ford is the Wakhan Kyoshpe, the holy man, the holy man. And there was a lot of medicine men and medicine women in that, in that Kyoshpe. And then the actual Oyukhbe themselves uh, were, they're, uh, they're the band's name, but they're also a Teoshpai of their own. And it's called Broken Off. Or, uh, there's some people uh, that translate as, uh, and, and I don't know if anybody's in man, listening from Manderson, I don't want to offend you, but Oyukhbe is like when you throw a lot of things away, kind of almost like like trashy, so to speak. So don't, um, I'm, this is according to my research, so don't argue with me when you see me somewhere. <laughs> and then the Tchashunke Ska is a white horse. That's the white horse. Uh, you go uh, kind of southwest from Manderson, the village. There's a creek back there, and there's people that live that way. Uh, they call them white uh, Tchashunke Ska, white horse creek. Then the actual area right around Manderson where the store is, is, um, is most okay, they call it a store. So those people live right around there. So that's where the housing is now, housing project. Uh, and then Chunkbe Opi, the Wounded Knee, is a part of that too. And there's names there too, but um, in, my, in my research, I couldn't find if they had different names, but I'm sure they did. So the Wakpamani Tushpai is the Makhbia Luta. So they're the ones around, uh, again, Pine Ridge. Payabia, they pushed aside. Bahazi, Zipila, Slim Buttes, west of Pine Ridge. Uh, Shugmani to Wakpa, Wolf Creek, which is east of Pine Ridge, where the um, school is, Lakota Tech and Wolf Creek School is that area. And then Wakpamani Ble is the Wakpamani Lake. So that's east of Pine Ridge way over there in the, um, along the Nebraska border. And then there's a Wazi Huhuhcha, a calico. So those are the people that live but right north of uh, Red Cloud School in that area. There's a community called Calico. And the reason it's called Calico is that was the name of their chief that settled there. They called it Calico. And then Wazipaha, they say Pine Ridge, but then the proper way is to say Wazi Ahaha. So next is the Kiyuksa Teoshpai, which is where I'm from. So the, that includes the community of Potato Creek, Blue Oak, eh, 
and the reason is is that it's called Blow Oak is along that creek was a lot of wild potatoes. So the people used to go and harvest them there and they're they're really good to eat if you've ever eaten them. They they taste better than the the potatoes that we um we buy in the store. And then there's the Chonicha Wanicha. So that's a teaching right there. Chonicha is an old time way of saying flesh, like your skin, your flesh, chonicha. Chonicha wanicha is no flesh. So that's right east of the town of Kyle, right there along that area. Um, there's people that live through there, they have their own community. Uh, and then Mila Haskat Hashunke, which was my grandfather, he lived uh, south of Kyle along, they call it uh, American Horse Creek. And he lived way on the edge of the creek where you down in the valley there. And then when you come up on top, you come out of the pines there. And then right in the town of Kyle is the creek, Medicine Root Creek. So they call it Pejuta Haka. And that's actually a medicine that they dug at one time. It's a medicine that grows longer. And they don't grow anywhere else. It's really um, uh, a lot of uh, hard to find when you find it. People really um, cherished it or were after it, coveted it, that medicine. So they would share it with each other. But it was really a powerful medicine. Like it's a bunch of roots that grow. Uh, along the creek banks and it's really it's a good medicine it cures almost just about everything so that's called Pejuta Haka. so that's actually the town of Kyle then Trokala the Kit Fox that was on when you go north of um, Kyle the area where Ampetaluta Otipi the um, the treatment center is that over that in the area all the way from Kyle to kind of north west of Kyle all the way up to the Badlands. That's called Pokala. And then there's the Kangi Nupa, the two crow. And they're along uh, Three Mile Creek. So um, Three Mile Creek and then a little further on is where um, is where American Horse Creek is too. So kind of like they're connected together. But they had two names of that creek. And then in the Wambalit Hills, by the only thing I could find is Kute Lips Camp. And they were also called the Seven Star Nations, that camp, that Tios by. So um, there's more. Bokhan uh, Eti is from Wambali, the Moves Camp, Tios by. And uh, Moves Camp branched off uh, the uh, the horn chips people now they just call themselves horn chips and then we moved to the pass pass creek church by that area there so there's motrozi yellow bear which is that canyon there minisha which is a red water uh, wagmiza wakpa which is corn creek when you go a little bit further east there's a place called corn creek and then going further west, there's Hochoka, which is a community of high soul. And then there's Waki and Pcheta, Fire Thunder. They were down in Yellow Bear Canyon. Motrowakpala, north of the town of Martin. That's where that Tiosh by was. And then Cheta, uh, Wahupa, the Hawkwing Tiosh by. They live north of the town of uh, Martin or on into Allen, that area. Kahi Sinte Tioshpai, Mokoshita, Rocky Ford, Owacheke, Wakpala, Church Creek, which is right south of where I live here. Wazi is Evergreen, where the community of Evergreen housing is, but that community is called uh, Wazi, or Evergreen. The Milaya Tapika, Knife Chief, that's where I live now. I married into this Tioshpai. They were also called Wachampa. Uh, and then the right in the village of uh, Porcupine is Pahin Sinte. So Pahin Sinte is, is uh, this creek is uh, named after a man, Porcupine Tail. So now they call all of this area Porcupine after that man who, who settled here. But actually, as you see, um, it's not all Porcupine. There's different Tioshpines. 
And so the Preshla, the Brotherhood, the original Vajraji, that's east of uh, Porcupine. That's where my mother was from. Uh, and then Pahin Sinte Baha, Porcupine View. So that was that area there too was um, uh, a part of the community of Porcupine. And the Teospai that settled there is uh, Chetan Wakia, the Thunderhawk Teospai. Uh, the ones that settled in Preshla was Rock, uh, Shot in the Eye, and Young Bear. That was the Teospai that settled there. So that's how uh, it's broken down. And some of the names are lost. Like uh, there's one. Uh, where the Wambali Teospai, the Pute Teospai, right east of there between the town of Wambali and Rosebud, there's one called Teo Chesley. The Teospai is called Teo Chesley, means to defecate, defecate in the lodge. And there's a story behind that, how they got that name. And I put that on Facebook one time, and here some woman got upset and said, there were names like that a long time ago. She said she got upset. She said, the white man gave us those names to put us down and make us feel bad about ourselves. But according to my grandparents and stuff, that really was the name of a Teospai. And I think we tend to um, overreact sometimes on these things because uh, in those days, in, in, th in those days, uh, that story was probably funny, something humorous that how that name was chosen. So I just wanted to point that out because our way of looking at things today is different from the things that they, the way they looked at things long ago. So uh, if you tell jokes today, uh, people will get offended. And I don't know if it's because of the Christian upbringing or what, but uh, a lot of these jokes, these old men, old women would tell were kind of like almost racy jokes, you know, like had um, some of them had sex in them. And they didn't think that as they didn't see that as bad long ago. It was just a part of the culture. So I always uh, think about one time an old man talked and he said, that's how the culture dies. He said, because the people like say in my generation, what we talked about and what we joked about today, people will take offense at that nowadays. But in those days, it wasn't looked at as bad or, or we were doing anything bad. So that's just an example. There's other things that, you know, teachings that, that, um, that we tell that people will say, you know, like say, if you don't fulfill your vow, like say you vow to Sunday. You feel you don't fulfill your vow, you'll have bad luck. So I heard a modern young woman, with it that was in her thirties. She said, "Well, if that's the case, then then it's evil. The sacred pipe is evil because you shouldn't be killed because you didn't fulfill something." But what she fails to understand is those laws and those those ways, those protocols, and those laws were put in place hundreds and thousands of years ago right, when we first got to sacred pipe so that so that um, we will follow the rules and all of our ancestors followed the rules that's why we survive to today See, that's that's uh it's not a really a long ago it wasn't a point of contention just people just accepted and tried to live by by the laws you know yeah. so it's it's interesting that we've come to that now. Oh, uh, like she, we have a an attendee who has a question for you. Okay. You want wanted to know? Can you repeat the name of the people east of Pine Ridge? Wagluke. Wagluke. Yeah. Wagluke. And what is that? What does that it mean? mean? It means it uh, means marrying among your own people. Mm. And then later it changed to Wagaluche was people that first went to the fort and lived there. Okay. At, at Fort Laramie. So it has two meanings. Mm. 
Oh, uh -huh. another question was the Melks camp people, are they also called the horn chip people? Yeah, they are the same people. Mm. Opila. Uh -huh. uh, allow you to continue. Thank you, Lakshi. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is a, a, a breakup of how the laws were long ago and how we observed them. Uh, so the everything, the foundation of everything was based upon the spiritual law. So the spiritual law is the laws that are around um, the ceremonies, the sacred pipe, the medicines, like sun dance, inipi, uh, uh, keeping of the soul, hapa wankayapi, uh, throwing of the ball game, uh, Riwang Wachipi, Sundance, Oini Kage, Sweat Lash, Honkampi, making a relative ceremony. So there were seven ceremonies. So the spiritual law was, was the basis of everything when we lived long ago. So protecting the medicines, the pipes, the ceremonies, we're all on the foundation of our people. That came first. So uh, today, uh, today we live under tribal law, state law, and federal law. But nobody looks at uh, nobody looks at uh, the sacred laws today. It's not like it's not really observed a lot of times. Um, like say uh, long ago, women on their monthly cleansing never went among the people. So they say Ishnati long ago. One way I had Ishnati, that woman is Ishnati, meaning dwelling alone. So long ago, the young women to protect the people never went to powwows or ceremonies or sun dances. Or around where medicine was being handled because they protected those things. They were taught from the time they were a little girl and could understand till they became women that you it was their role to protect these things. Uh, and so a lot of these laws kind of connect with each other. Uh, so the so the spiritual laws were like say uh, Example would be what I just told about women coming because the understanding is that they have a strong power and, and an influence and they can overpower, like say, a ceremony and neutralize it. Or if they're around uh, somebody, some holy man boiling medicine, they could neutralize that met the power of that medicine. So it won't help that person that's uh, not that's sick, that's ill. So that's an example of how they protected it. Uh, or they won't go to a holy man's like teepee if she's like that. So because they couldn't go anywhere, they dwelled in a, a teepee alone. Um, and this wasn't during their first ceremony. This was all the time. Every month they stayed alone. If there was more than one woman in camp like that, young women, then they would sit all together. They would put them in a teepee where the old women would feed them and make sure that they stayed there, kind of almost guarded them. So that's an example. Another example of spiritual law is if you go to a sun dance, then one of the laws they have is uh, you can't cross that east gate. And the reason is that that's the direction from which the spirits enter. So they say that if you go across that, then you stop the spirits from coming in. So that's where they enter from. So uh, that's another example of spiritual law. Uh, another one is if a, if a man or a woman is smoking a sacred pipe, you can't go in front of them because you break their connection, their prayer that they're saying or they're smoking their pipe. You break, you break the uh, connection there. So those are examples of spiritual law. And there's more and more. I know a lot of you can list them too from your own teachings. Then there's the natural law, the makha'o mantra, 
Wamat Kashka. So how we lived as Lakota people was we lived side by side with these people to the and we call them nations too. So we're a Oyate, we're a Wahunopa, two legged Oyate, the Zintkala Oyate, the bird nation, the Wahutopa Oyate, the four legged nation. Nuampi what what swims in the ocean. Uh, what crawls on the earth. Uh, those were, we looked at everything as oyate, as their nations of their own. Wakin oyate, the thunder nation. Wambli uh, oyate, the eagle nation. Cheta oyate, the uh, hawk nation. Tunka oyate, the stone nation. So everything we looked at in that way. And um, we um, seen all of the universe as that. The Wap Wahut Oyate, the root people, the Wapta Oyate, the plant people, all of that. So Oyate, meaning we're equal with them, but we're not above them. We were equal with them. So that's how that was the natural law of uh, how we. Um, worked worked ourselves um, so the spiritual law as you can say see you can it it goes into the natural law also so the spiritual law um, of what how we conduct ourselves with the sacred things was also part of the natural law so we didn't kill indiscriminately just for the sport like the washichu does we killed only to survive and so, and we believed in um, conservation. So when we dig medicine, if it's the root we want, then, and even with timsila, this uh, sacred um, food that we have, the sacred turnips, when you, when we go and dig it, we put tobacco in there after we get the uh, timsila, the root, and then we turn the plant upside down after we put tobacco in it, we put the plant back down, inner upside down. If you go back there next year, there'll be another team slugger. It grow from that, what you just did. So we never just, to, today, I know a lot of people just dig them up and get the uh, roots, I mean, the plants, the team slugger itself, and then braid it. But they don't, uh, they don't turn that top back upside down and put it back in a hole with tobacco. So. There is a possibility that we're going to run out of Team Sila someday if that continues. Because I see lots and lots of people selling these braids of Team Sila. The same thing is true of sage. So I see people that go and grab the sage and pull it up. And then they pull the roots up too. And then before they use it in ceremony, they take a hatchet or axe and chop the, chop the roots off. And so there, there's going to be a time that there might not be any sage. And the same with uh, cottonwood trees. There's so many sun dances that uh, every year when we're done with sun dance in the fall, we plant uh, maybe four or five uh, cottonwood trees down along the creek close to the sun dance. Thing. So those trees are growing now. And so in the future, my grandchildren will have Sundance trees, but these other Sundances, I don't know if they're doing that. I hope they do, but I'm hoping they do. I, I told my grandson, I said, he's only 10 years old. Someday I said, you're going to have Sundance trees, but nobody else will have, have them, so they'll be trying to come steal yours. He said, I'll guard them with my bow and arrows. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, that's example of the natural law. And then custom law is like, say, how we interact with each other as uh, two-legged people. So one example of custom law is uh, how we don't talk to our, uh, I don't talk, I didn't talk to my mother-in-law when she was alive. And my father never talked to my wife either. We, we had that avoidance of each other. And if I was in a room and everybody left and just me and my mother-in-law was there, then I would leave the room or she would leave the room. 
which everyone left first, but she wouldn't stay in the same room with me and I wouldn't either stay in the same room with her. So that's an example of um, custom law, how we um, interacted with each other. And then one of the other ones is like uh, putting the old people and the sick and the children first and everything. So we feed them first a long time ago, but now everybody's out for themselves. Everybody just pushes in when there's it's time to eat and they don't think about the sick or the children or the older older people. So lately they've been going back to that. And now that they they make plates and stuff whenever they have a meal. But that there was a time when that was gone. Nobody did that for, for a long time. Uh, so and then there's a governance oyate ptaila. So how we conducted ourselves in a group so they would appoint uh, a warrior society to keep order um, and they would like at a Sundance they would be um, a warrior society to make sure people went by the rules and didn't cross over in front of the Sundance tree when it's moving all of those things like that um, they had people tie their dogs up and like that so there was a dog loose that warrior society would catch it and take it back and they said if you do it again we'll we'll do away with your dog so things like that they enforced the, the laws of that and if there's any bickering or quarreling then that warrior society would go over there and kind of um, see what's happening and diffuse the situation so that's kind of like so like things like ceremonies are when they went on a communal hunt when the tribe went on a hunt they made sure no one went ahead and uh, scared the buffalo off or when they went to war then they always had a warrior society keeping kind of like police like security and making sure nobody rushes ahead and alarms the enemy of anything like that so everything was done to the for the good of the the people um, so that the people as a whole would survive um, i really like like she what you talked about in regards to the natural law of how we should replant like timsla and mm -hmm. stage and making sure that we're respecting uchi makai and that these medicines, these pajutas that'll help our communities and our families that we're mindful when we're picking sage to, to not uproot it, to, mm -hmm. to, to offer tobacco and, and to cut it above. And then with the timsula, when we're, we're, when we're out there harvesting to make sure that we're replanting it. And so I yeah. just wanted to say, well, you know, that's really good knowledge for all of us to be mindful mm -hmm. of we're continuing our our um pajuta and we're able to continue to harvest if we're being mindful mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh, Peter. so we always talk about the people's government so you see it on facebook especially when council meeting is on people say we need to go back to the traditional government so this is how it was structured so there was four Inila Wota, they're silent eaters, they call them. They were called, they were what they would say, a feasting society. But they were four old men that made the decisions along with their wives. So they would feast in a teepee and uh, they would bring them food while they deliberated on something, like something that was going to happen or somebody that did something against somebody else in the family. In the families so they would um, meet on that and and one of the famous ones is these after no water shot supposedly shot crazy horse uh crazy horse's family and no water's family got together and no water's family gave crazy horse's family gifts horses blankets different gifts and once the family of crazy horse accepted the gifts then there should there's not supposed to be any kind of retaliation or anything and so at one point after crazy horse recovered from his wound they said that he found uh, no water out hunting by himself 
So Crazy Horse shot at uh, No Water and chased him, but they said No Water had a faster horse. So he got away. So when word came back to camp, the Inilawota had a meeting and they, they deliberated, deliberated for several days and they came to the decision to take um, crazy horses, they call it war shirt, Ogle, and that's from, because he was chosen a Wichashaya Dampika. He's a shirt wearer and he was sworn to always protect the Oyate. And so there was four of them, crazy horse, my grandfather, American horse, a um, young man afraid of horses and a man named Sword carries the sword. And so uh, when this incident happened with no water, uh, crazy horse was a shirt wearer. So they deliberated and they came to the decision that Inila Wata, that he broke custom law because, um, and probably even spiritual law because uh, he retaliated against no water, even though they received, they took the gifts. And stuff. So it's supposed to have ended there. So on two counts, one was he broke um, custom law by retaliating, but the other two, the other one, the other count that was uh, held against him was uh, he almost caused a war among the, the Oglalas themselves. So um, no waters, Tioshpae, the, the Sheik Shichala, and uh, Oyuchbe uh, would have had a fight, would have had a war right within the tribe. And of course, it would have escalated because some would, some would uh, get on the side of Crazy Horse and some would get on the side of No Water. So there would have been an all out battle there. So based on that, they removed his shirt from him. And that shirt never was put on anybody again. And uh, Inila Wota, next, some of them wanted to put Crazy Horse, his shirt on Rekla. But Rekla, the other Inila Wota, uh, voted against it. So they had to have a consensus in order to pass something. They have to all agree on something. And they couldn't agree on it. So they deliberated for four or five days and then they just because um, uh, they couldn't come to a consensus then to a trial. They said, Ole, wanna tell you, look, this died now. So this like died on the table, so to speak. Um, so it never was put on anybody again. And so um, that's an example of how the Inila Wata exercised their power. And then the ones that are Wakichunze, uh, they carried out the decisions of the Inila Wata. There was four Wakichos. And they were given, the symbol of their office was a sacred pipe. Um, and so they were given a sacred pipe to pray and, and um, always be there uh, for the people. And if they have to, they, uh, have, they give their life. So that symbol of their office is the sacred pipe. And then there's the shirt wearers that I talked about. There's four of them. So after the incident between No Water and Crazy Horse, they, there was three shirt wearers left. And then uh, eventually they took American horses from him because um, he took the law into his own hands and he killed a man because the Indian police was after him, but they were scared of, scared of this man. So um, my grandpa went over there and shot him and put him in a wagon and took him to the uh, Indian police. Said, this is what you had needed to do, but you guys are cowards. <laughs> and then the Nacha were the leaders of the Teoshpaes, like I talked about. The Teoshpaes that were in each uh, Oyanke. So Oyanke is like Wajaje, Kiyuksa, like that. Ite, Shicha. So the Nacha were and he heads of those um, Teoshpaes. So they're the ones that wore, their symbol was, they wore a, a, a headdress, what they call a war bonnet. But uh, I think today everybody thinks that if you're a leader, then you wear a war bonnet. But with Chasha Yatampika, they didn't wear war bonnets and neither did the Wakichunze and neither did the Inila Wota. 
So under the Nachao were the, the warriors, uh, and then there was the people of the tribe, the Oyate. So the uh, Kiyoshpais were, were um, the ones that chose the Nacha. And so, uh, so like my, my uh, Kiyoshpai here was a uh, knife chief and iron claw. They were the chiefs. So uh, in latter years, my brother-in-law, um, uh, Paul Ironcloud became the Nacha till he died a few years back here. So there's no Nacha yet. They haven't chosen anybody. Of my father's uh, Kiyoshpai, uh, I have a Nacha. His name is Joe American Host. So he's my older cousin. So he's the he's the um, Nacha of our Kiyoshpai. And he's still up in the middle to late 80s, but he's still alive and still attends our meetings. So that's the presentation today. So I don't know if there's any questions or anything. Let me go ahead and check the um, question and answer box. There was a question of, is there going to be a recording available? We need to continue teaching these um, names. And that was from Amanda Takes Verb on it. So mm -hmm. the um, recordings will be available. If you registered for this um, Zoom, it will be emailed to you after the session is done. Allow about 24 hours. And then it will also be uploaded to our website, which I put in the chat as well. Lexi, we also had an, um, Jasmine Antoine say thank you for answering the questions. It's an honor to be listening to these teachings. Mm. And so a lot of people are just saying, well, Pila, these are really important and they want them to be shared. And mm. so. Watched it. Watched it. So for next week, um, I'll send you the topic probably because in the next few days. Okay, or do we have a topic? <laughs> we, we do, and um, we'll visit more, but there will be a teaching every month yeah. up until next year. And so we're really honored to have Lexi, Rick, two dogs being able to do this. Um, and then this is supported by the South Dakota Humanities Council. And again, thank you all for attending today's session and the cultural teaching by Lexi, Rick, two dogs. And we'll mm -hmm. see you. See you next next month. Okay. Mosh tip. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Doksha. Doksha.